Going on YouTube, Clover Bells here, back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today we're going to be recapping the Stockholm Regionals from this past weekend. So a little bit of a smaller regional, only about 256 master players. But the results uh, were rather big. So this is the aftermath of the Indianapolis Regionals, uh, which was uh, about a week or so uh, ago. And again, this is all more data leading into uh, the Los Angeles Regionals coming up later this month. So... Um, what did we learn? We learned a few things, okay? Uh, we learned that Zamazenta is now the new top dog, which we'll get into in a second. And we've also found uh, some interesting tech and niche options that maybe uh, more people will be willing to explore as we head into Los Angeles. And then we also uh, discovered uh, just how good uh, some other restricteds are, you know, even dating back uh, to the previous regions. All right, so we're gonna recap everything. We'll look at usage data first because that's always important in a, especially in a brand new format, right? And it, anytime you get, uh, you know, a new format, you want to look at usage data, see what people are using right now in the get-go because it's only two weeks. You know, results are still rather somewhat volatile. You know, it's it's gonna go back and forth. People are trying different things, so you know, it's always good idea to pay attention to what's being used and what's uh high in in usage right now all right so let's take a look at that so we'll start with day one and then we'll head into day two usage but of course first we'll look at the non-restricted list and then we'll look at the restricted list so here we are we're looking at day one usage here and again some interesting things uh and and also some relatively standard stuff first of all in cinema at number one is no surprise 60 percent usage all right remember uh back in indianapolis it was 70 percent usage uh within day two so here uh, not too much different here, 60%, still very, very high. Look at Amungus at number two uh, with the 40%. So it's no surprise here that you're you're getting a defensive backbone leading the way uh, into this region, right? I always like to say defensive backbone uh, is very important in a restricted format because, again, you, you can't just let all these restricted uber legendaries with base 150 attack run wild. You need some way... To mitigate that damage you need to protect yourself right so you get a redirector here you get a fake out user you get a will o whisper you get a knockoff user right uh, all things uh that you want in you know defensive pokemon and center and among us can give you that right then you have the raging bolt here at third place and again this one's also no surprise it does well into a lot of different matchups right? you got the assault vest set with snarl which is great into the calyrex shadow rider uh, and, you know, it, it's also pretty good into Kyogre stuff. It's great into Pelipper, Urshifu, uh, other bulky water types. Uh, and again, you always have that good, solid dragon move that you can click into other dragon restricted. like Coridon, for example. Also very, very splashable on those Coridon teams as well, you know, just because it gets the benefit from Sun. Um, and you can also play this on a Trickum team with Calyrex Ice Rider. So Raging Bolt, I would say, along with Incineroar and Amoongus, is one of the most splashable um you know pokemon that you can have on your team that's not a restricted legendary right then after that you know um urshifu rillaboom you know they, again incineroar urshifu rillaboom they're part of the patented uh fire water grass cord that a lot of these balance teams are even using so uh no surprise there Fluttermane down to 23 percent wow you know it, it still within the top six of course but 23 percent uses is still a far cry of what it once was uh you know in regulation app but again that's to be expected that's because you know there's like you know calyrex shadow rider running around there's there's other legendaries to be had um so flutter main you know taking somewhat of a backseat but still very very solid of course still something that benefits in the sun uh still you know with booster energy and icy wind support you can get the speed control on your side so it's still very very good then as you head down here into the bottom six uh again pelipper again may be the most uh you know you uh pokemon i don't want to say like use but it, it, it's it's just a pokemon that you know you just wouldn't have expected to be this high usage uh you know maybe a month ago but here it is now uh just like where it, it picked up where it left off in indianapolis wide guard user you get a rain setter and you don't have to commit your restricted slot you know uh, unlike kyogre right and then at the same time you know weather ball just does so much damage uh, and you can sash this thing you can put a rocky helmet uh, but Pelipper looking really good, especially with, again, like I said, the white guard support. Then Ferrigraph, uh, Whimsicott, Ursaluna, Tornado stuff. This is, this is, these are all pieces uh, from the Coridon teams, right? Like, again, Coridon definitely enjoys the Ursaluna, Ferrigraph core, along with the Tailwind Seller, whether it be Whimsicott or Tornadus. 
But, you know, Tornadus is very splash on a lot of hyper-offensive teams, not just necessarily Maridon stuff. You can use it with Coridon. You can use it with Calyrex Shadow Rider. You can use it, you know, just like a very, very versatile, you know, with Tornadus Urshifu stuff as well, right? And then there, in 12th place here, you have the, the single strike Urshifu. Again, that's for your Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup. That's also for Lunala, for example. Fighting type is good into Terrapagos and even decent into Zamazenta, for example. So... Um, no surprise there. So again, the top 12, I'm not surprised. This is this is the Indianapolis trickle effect, right? You know, again, from the Maridon stuff, these are all pieces from the, the Maridon teams. And then over here, you get a lot of the balanced stuff uh, within the top six. So that's, a, that's expected. But then if you head into day two, look at this. Pelipper now in top three, 40% usage. Incineroar gets a little bump, you know, 62% Raging Bolt. And Amoongus more or less switching places a little bit. Actually, Raging Bull was third over here. But still very high uses. Amoongus still, you know, 37% versus the, the 40%. So still solid. But again, look at this. Like, it's it's still so surprising. Again, Urshi for Rapid Strike, Rillaboom still heading the way. But more or less, everything else is still staying where they are for the most part. It's just like, it's funny to see Pelipper at 40% usage. Again, Calyrex Ice Rider teams enjoy it. Zamazenta teams enjoy it. Um, even Shadow Rider teams enjoy it, right? So, you know, it's a very splashable mod here. Uh, but other than that, no surprises uh, the rest of the way. We already talked about these mods in, in day in day one, right? So now uh, let's look at the restricted list and let's see what happened from day one into day two. All right, so now this is day one of the restricted list into Stockholm. And Calyrex Ice Rider leads the way with 21 percent uses this is also again picking up where it left off from indianapolis uh from day two when calyx ice rider was the most used restricted uh the shadow rider uh down to you know right here 13 percent so you know it's it's still like high usage of course uh because again it's just so oppressive at Aster barrage but so many teams have a lot of different things uh for it and we'll we'll get to that as we talk more into about Sh a shadow rider here and we'll even have like a whole separate video why it's so much struggling uh, to get its legs within the format when at the beginning everyone thought this was going to run through right but it hasn't and there's many reasons why and we'll get into those right but Terrapa goes over here at number two makes sense it finished second yet again <laughs> so uh, it's still a very good mod and this is one of the problems for Calyrex right it can't hit it with Astro Barrage it's a normal type uh, which in turn leads to fighting types uh, you know, seeing an increase in play, right? So you'll see something like Zamazenta, you'll see something like Karidon over here, get some good usage, which they have been, okay? And then from here, Mer again, Maridon, the trickle effect from Indianapolis. So many people now using this thing, right? So, you know, the apology form has been filled out, okay? So people are now using this. And then, of course, the weather guys, you know, with Kyogre and Groudon, you know, as expected, they're, they're, they're pretty solid, all in all. Like, they may not be, like, the S-tier, Mons, but they're still like low A, high B tier uses. So X is as expected. Zacian and then Lunala trailing the way, right? And again, Zacian, again, uh, you, we now live in a world where Zacian is just nowhere near as good as Zamazenta, thanks to one move. That one move is called Body Press, but it, it's not just that, right? Remember the nerfs to Zacian. It's not just because Zamazenta got Body Press uh, is the reason why it's better. Zacian got nerfed to the ground, man. Like again, the, the attack stat loss, the, the Intrepid Sword boost, you know, only happening once. That's that's very costly uh, for Zacian. I felt like maybe just one of those uh, was necessary. I didn't, I, I thought taught both was just way too much for it to, to really compete with some of these guys. Then Lunala, one of our favorites, right? Again, we, we had a tournament winning Lunala team, which will feature uh, in the video after this one. But nice to see Lunala get a little bit of usage. But again, just like Calyrex... Uh, there's a lot of dark types, so you just have to be careful in how you position this thing. But you do have Terrastalization available, and I do think it's really good with something like an Ursa Luna, uh, just because uh, Calyrex can't really hit a normal type. So, you know, again, that dates to the other weaknesses of Calyrex. There's a lot more normal types, there's more dark types um, to deal with it, and that's important, right? And that, that also has led to the, the drop... Uh, in the success uh, of Calyrex Shadow Rider, right? But other than that, Zamazenta, you know, body press, uh, really good into Terrapagos, really good into Incineroar. It just one-shots it, right? So uh, it, it's 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 quite solid. And there's lots of ways you can really build around it. 
Uh, it's not just Keanu's team, uh, aka Michael Zhang's team, right? There's other ways to build it, and you'll see the, uh, what we're talking about in a second. But uh, from there, uh, the Coridon stuff, again, really, really good with Protosynthesis mods. It's it's getting a little bit more played than Groudon, but you can build them similarly. But again, the difference is the fighting type is really good into Terrapicals, right? So that's the, the main selling point uh, for Coridon in that sense. Uh, and then Groudon over here can still do Groudon things, but you know you just have to make sure Groudon has its has its eyeglasses right when it wants to hit precipice blades. But this is day one. Okay, now if we look into day two, all right, a little bit of a, a surprise. Look at this, twenty five percent uses from Zamazenta. It is now, like I said earlier in the video, the top dog in usage. Right, that's that's quite that's quite good. And then Calyrex twenty one point nine is that that's almost pretty much where it once was. Uh, in day one and then Terrapagos and Maridon and Calyx following right so again take the Zamazenta and just push it ahead uh about four slots and you pretty much have everything else follow suit right so um that's really interesting <laughs> but again the main selling point here is that Zamazenta is now uh the the number one used restricted uh the, I, I can't believe I'm saying that <laughs> okay if you had to go back in time in, in Sword and Shield and tell someone that they would not believe you by any means stretch, right? But, you know, uh, should we get our apology forms ready? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the winning team um, from Michael, uh, and then we'll take a look at the, the second place team and then some of the other successful art types and some niche options that we notice uh, throughout the regional. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, so once again, we're back on the Lab Mouse website for all the data that we want from the Stockholm regions. And again, shout outs to all the guys at, at Lab Mouse for doing the tough job that they have and putting all this together in a presentable format. So again, shout outs to them. They're the real MVP, but let's take a look at the team. So winning team, Michael Kelsey's team, right? This is the, the Keanu team, AKA the Michael Zhang team. Uh, but again, it's the Latios, Moltres, Zamazenta stuff, right? So again, the Moltres here with Tailwind. Again, this is like one of our favorites because we've always made like successful Moltres teams, uh, you know, in, in the past. And it's good to see it again. Uh, again, it's a, it's a great Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup, Mon. And a flying type makes it so that, you know, ground types can't really hit it all that well. So that's good. Uh, then you give speed control to the entire team with Tailwind. So that's nice. Black Glasses will make it hit a lot. Okay. The Zamazenta has Wide Guard. So that's very good against the Calyrex Ice Rider stuff. Uh, then you have the Chen Pao Rillaboom uh, combination here with Zamazenta. I like these three together. I, I we use that as well, like on our Zamazenta team. We, you know, and again, it just works because sometimes Zamazenta needs a little bit of boost in damage, and this is one way to do it uh, by adding Chen Pao here to the to the fray. And then Rillaboom, of course, with the Choice Band stuff without Fake Out, uh, it's just going to do so much damage here. And of course, the Pelipper here, right? Double Wide Guard, by the way. I just want you guys to know that double Wide Guard. Usually, you want one or the other, but um, you know, Michael says, you know, we're, we're going to go with double wide guard, of course. Uh, then the Latios here, you know, Luster Purge, Dra Dra Draco Meter. I almost said Dragon Meter. And then Icy Wind, little speed control. Um, again, a little bit of good offense. Levitate, again, um, nice little ground pivot option for Zamas. And lots of ground pivot options here, right? One, two, three Pokemon that are essentially like quote unquote flying. That's great for Zamazenta, of course. Um, and then, you know, again, weakness to the fighting stuff. You can just swap in Latios. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, Luster Purge. Great damage against stuff like that. That is Terra Poison, for that matter. Uh, you know, and namely, like Amoongus, for example. Uh, it's good into that. But just Dragon Typing, again, helps you against the Fire, Water, Grass stuff. So uh, all in all, Latios is relatively solid. But, uh, you know, again, just the, 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 the makeup of the team. You know, again, shout out to Michael Zhang. Like, the, the fact that... He's so creative to come up with something like this. And then now the other Michael, Michael Kuss, is able to take this and just win a regional with it. Uh, just goes to show you um, how good it is and how uh, creative uh, the setup is. I like this a lot. Uh, hopefully the rental gets put out soon, uh, maybe after LA. And then from there, we'll, we'll get to showcase it on the channel. But um, over here, then in second place, uh, Terrapagos, again, another one, another second place uh, result. But again, uh, Terrapicos is really solid, you know, especially with Chi, right? It's just going to do more damage uh, because of Beads of Ruin. But now people are starting to divert away from the Calm Mind stuff with Leftovers. Uh, now it's all about the Choice Spec stuff or even the Calm Mind um, Covert Cloak, Clear Amulet stuff that was, you know, really used for a hot minute. But Choice Specs, 
you know, lots of damage. Terra Star Storm, Earth Power, Hyper Beam, Dark Pulse. So, you know, you have the Dark Tech move against the Calyrex. Not only you you being a normal type, right? Because you need to hit something. Uh, you need to hit those ghost types, right? You know, you can't just only rely on Earth Power. It's not really that great. That's good for the Steel types, stuff that resists the Terra Star Storm. Um, and again, Hyper Beam, good solid single target move if you really need a little bit of burst. Chi just helps all of this do more damage. Then you add Tornadus Fluttermane, right, to this, right? And then you have the classic trio, um, you know, with special attackers. But again, with this Fluttermane, Booster Energy, Icy Wind, like we said, um, for giving you that speed control along with Tailwind and Scary Face. That's also really nice. Amoongus gives you that Trick Room matchup. It also helps divert some of those fighting type attacks away from Terrapagos and Chiyu. You know, some stuff like Body Press, Amoongus is able to resist that. Um, which is why Latios looks really good into Amoongus, right? Then you have the Cornerstone Ogre Pond here. Uh, lots of things are flying, right? Um, and of course, some fire types as well. So Cornerstone looking really good here, especially with Sturdy, right? Power Whip, also pretty good. Follow me, redirection support. Um, all in all, like a, a pretty good solid choice specs Terrapagos team. The more people will start using this and maybe they'll probably divert away from the Clear Amulet, um, you know, Cobra Cloak stuff, which means you can snarl this thing now, right? So that's important to note, right? You take those items away in exchange, you're going to get more damage with choice specs. You're going to get more tech moves, but then now you can snarl this thing now. So, you know, just be aware of that, of course. But all in all, again, a very solid uh, Terrapagos team. So those are the first and second place teams. So now let's look at some of the other archetypes uh, that were also uh, very successful in the regional. All right, let's look at some Calyrex Ice Rider teams because we did see some adaptations and tech choices uh, within the, the standard archetype. So first of all, uh, let's look at Marco Silva's team, right? Marco Fiero. So he's still, you, of course, you know, Incineroar Among Us defensive backbone with Raging Bolt uh, for, you know, uh, other types of matchups here. Electro Whip, Speed Control here. But uh, Goldango and Urshifu uh, Dark, right? Rather than like the Pelipper, uh, Urshifu Surging Strikes kind of idea, right? But because Goldango looks... Pretty good here. Uh, you know, you're able to set up Nasty Plot thanks to the Amoongus uh, with redirection support. Fake out Nasty Plot as well. And then this does well into the mirror. Like, make it rain uh, into uh, an ice type uh, is, is strong. Okay. And then at the same time, you get your own Amoongus immunity uh, if you do click the Trick Room, right? Because um, good as gold is a, is a great ability. And then, of course, the Urshifu gives you a, a good matchup into... Uh, the Shadow Rider matchup, right? But overall, like, I like this team. It's just a little bit different than the Pelipper, um, you know, Ur Urshifu Searching Strike stuff. Then you have this team, right? Timu's team here with the Milotic, the competitive stuff. Uh, so, you know, pretty good into Incineroar, right? Uh, Hypnosis uh, to put things to sleep. That's going to help you set up a lot of different things. Muddy Water as well, like Accuracy Drops. Then you still have the Galarian Moltres here yet again, along with the Tinglu. I do like Tinglu Calyrex. I think that's another duo that can do well together for sure. Then you have Grimmsnarl, right? Screens Grimmsnarl. Then you have Trick Lagging Tail. Trick Lagging Tail was a, a thing from Sword and Shield in the Dynamax era. You haven't really seen that uh, you know, all that much at all, actually, uh, in Scarlet and Violet. But here we are uh, bringing it back here. So good speed control option there. But Choice Specs, Galarian Mulches with Fiery Wrath, Air Slash, Dark Pulse, and in Foul Play. That's a set. <laughs> and, you know, Mulches behind screens is really strong. And then you're able to heal it with the Amoongus. So that's also pretty interesting. And then, of course, Tinglu, Amoongus. We already know what these guys can do. It's all about damage mitigation here, right? Grimmsnarl, Amoongus, Tinglu, Milotic, especially with Hypnosis and Safeguard, might I add. So that's going to be good against another Amoongus, right? No status. So that's going to be, you know, again, this is a very, very bulky defensive team, very slow team, but it's all about making sure that the Calyrex is going to be able to come in and do the job, right? But I do like this. Uh, this is very interesting in terms of building. So shout out to Timu for something like this. But again, another team with Galarian Moltres. I do like that. Um, then over here, this is the traditional archetype, right? With the Pelipper, um, Urshifu Surging Strikes, and then the Raging Bull. But... Uh, the one thing that people are now doing is adding coaching uh, to the Urshifu Rapid Strike. So coaching is now going to help the Calyrex do a lot more damage, be super bulky, right? You can even go like coaching turn one into Trick Room Calyrex, right? Just make this thing super bulky. Maybe you might even take off a little bit of uh, its attack just be, you know, and add more bulk to it just because 
um, you have the option for coaching as well. You can also technically coach your own Incineroar. Don't forget about that. Um, but of course, it, the coaching is meant for uh, the Calyrex Ice Rider without a doubt. Now, we did see this before a little bit with Mian Chao coaching, but Urshifu Choice Scarf coaching also uh, makes sense as well. So this is a nice little tech choice adaptation uh, to what is otherwise a very standard six. Then over here, okay, we did see a 6-3 result here, which is still okay. Um, I want to make note of Entei here. I, I have seen Entei get some results in some of the online grassroots tours from Limitless. If Zama, Zenta, and Calyrex are going to rise, then Entei looks really good, you know, with Sacred Fire, okay? And again, you don't have to commit Ho'o, a restricted slot, to get access to Sacred Fire. Entei now can give you just that. And then at the same time, you have Snarl. Uh, for you know Calyrex stuff you have stopping tantrum uh, which is not too bad into the Maridon stuff so lots lots of use for Entei on a team like this and then after that you know it's just you know for graph Ogre Pond Wellspring is also pretty good that's for like your Kyogre Urshifu stuff that's gonna that's gonna protect the Entei right you have your fighter water grass core here and again the Urshifu dark uh, is just gonna give you another good solid dark type uh, into the other Calyrex and then Raging Pull just does Raging Pull things so but again, I just really wanted to highlight the Entei there. Um, then some people are just going to, of course, try some screen stuff with Ninetales here. So David uh, is making use of that. So instead of Grimmsnarl screens, we have Ninetales screens here, uh, along with bringing the snow, which is, again, going to you know change Pelipper's weather. Uh, and then at the same time, change Kyogre's weather and even Torkoal's weather. And then you have Ditto, <laughs> right? Sash Ditto. You get a free Restricted if you're able to position this properly. Right, and then Sinistra just makes everything heal. So that's pretty cool. But look at this Blood Moon or Saluna set. Assault Fest Blood Moon. I have not seen this, okay? But it's got Blood Moon, Hyper Voice, Earth Power, but no Protect. It has Snarl instead. How about that uh, for a tech choice against the Shadow Rider? This is this is pretty cool. I have to I have to say, this is some good team building here. And then, of course, Life Dew, Trick Room stuff. That's going to make everything heal over time so this is a uh, pretty cool like i i respect the 6-3 nine tails calyrex team over here but then look at this garganical finally makes a play so instead of raging bolt here now you add garganical this also makes sense too so um salt cure recover iron defense protect interesting enough no white guard but that's because pelipper here has white guard so um that's gonna help it there but again garganical also gonna be a relatively annoying here with the salt cure stuff and then this these end games with just Clicking salt cures, protects, recovers with leftovers, right? Um, no coaching on this Urshifu, just a standard set. But again, Incin, Amoongus, Urshifu, Pelipper, right? The only difference here is the, there's a Garganical as opposed to Raging Ball. I thought that's also a, a nice little niche touch there, right? But um, I digress. So those are the Calyrex teams. Again, lots of, um, you know, day twos. Uh, but overall, there's lots of different ways to, to build it. It's not just straight Pelipper stuff. But hopefully you can get some inspiration from these guys. All right, so my, people want to, you know, really jump on the bandwagon of Calyrex Shadow Rider struggles uh, for, for top cut results. But, like, look at this. Like, 10-4 is still good, okay? Like, 13th and 14th, like, top 16. Like, that's still, like, pretty solid, okay? Let's look at both of these teams. And even the 9-5 team from, from our good friend Mr. Olsen over here. Um, but let's look at this. So, um, right away... I, I want to make note of the Kamo here. Like, I feel like Kamo -O is also a good solid option with Calyrex Shadow Rider, just like Mian Chao. You need a good fighting type, uh, you know, to go against some of the dark stuff. And Kamo can give you that, um, especially with, like, again, Iron Defense, Body Press stuff. You don't have to commit a Zamazenta to do that. So Kamo fits in relatively nicely here. It does great into Incineroar, by the way. And then you have a nice little tech choice with Throw Chop there. That's also pretty good into the Mirror matchup, so that's nice. Then, of course... Tornadus with Ogre Pond Wellspring here, you know, with Brain Dance, a little bit more damage. Uh, again, speed control with the Tailwind. Then you have Smeargle stuff, man. Fake Out, Follow Me, Spore, Wide Guard. What a set, right? I mean, this is this is the premier Smeargle set. Um, and again, another normal type here. Um, and it's just a, an interesting mod to try and utilize. But again, it works. Uh, then, of course, AV Instant here looks pretty interesting. Um, but overall, I, I do like the combo idea uh, from Patrick. So shout out to him. Then we have Luis Mark, uh, Markle. Okay, then here's the Mian Shower again. So a, another fighting type like we mentioned with Calyrex. But this is a bulky Calyrex with Clefairy here. And I do like Clefairy with Calyrex. Again, that's that's against, um, you know, dark stuff. 
because you know fairy type can resist it now you're adding friend guard um which makes the entire team bulky and now you can add some bulk on this calyrex right and then from there you can live a lot of different attacks but especially with your citrus berry so and then now because you have a redirect on your team uh, you can even set up this nasty plot, right? Along with the Amoongus, not the Amoongus, the Rillaboom fake out stuff. So that's pretty cool. Then you add the Chiyu Fluttermane here. So you have the aggression with the special attackers uh, and it's Covert Cloak Chiyu, right? So Snarl is, uh, is a thing. Taunt is a thing on the Chiyu here. No, you might even, you're more common to see like Taunt Fluttermane, but I haven't really seen Taunt Chiyu. So that's cool. But then over here, Sing, yeah, look, there's no attack on this on this buffer. It's just helping and follow me, Sing Protect. So go figure. And here's the booster energy, Flutter Slot. Like, it's always interesting to see Flutterman and Calyx on the same team. But again, you do need the Fairy type against the um, the Dark types. So, uh, you know, Clefairy got no offense, so you need offense somewhere. There's no, there is Draining Kiss here a little bit, but sometimes you don't want to Terra and you kind of need to preserve it so Flutterman can just give you uh, that raw fairy damage overall and again Rillaboom here uh, grassy terrain stuff take away DD terrain uh, take away you know electric terrain from a ride on of course um, some good use there but overall uh, it still works right then over here this is like the more standard raging bolt of uh, raging bolt the more standard calyrex but you've got tornadoes tailwind stuff Okay, along with the instant Amoongus defensive backbone with Raging Bolt here. This is Calm Mind Raging Bolt, by the way, um, which you can set up with the Amoongus and the Incineroar. Then you have Urshifu uh, in the rain with Tornado. So again, this is also pretty, a you know, a little bit more standard, but this is Life Orb Calyrex, right? So uh, Olsen is opting for violence uh, with Astro Barrage, Draining Kiss, and the Nasty Plot. So, um, you know, go figure there. So two setup bonds. I feel like... You know, I don't know. Do you really need both Calm Mind and Nasty Plot on the same team? I guess it works in the past, right? Um, you can still technically pull this off. But um, again, I do like this. It's still it's still a relatively solid team, right? So, you know, Calyx still has some good teams here, right? Even this one. Like, this one has Gashadon. 8-6. Um, again, Gashadon is another one of those niche mons uh, that you'll expect to see a little bit more uh, on some different teams, right? And this is the set Earth Power and Yawn along with Protect. You can put Icy Wind here. I thought you might even have like Ice Beam, but Icy Wind is good speed control. Again, how does Maridon hit this thing? It doesn't, right? It has to commit the Draco Meteor. Um, so, you know, if it wants to do that, sure, uh, go for it. And then Gastronaut also pretty good into Raging Bolt. Uh, and, and, you know, just the Yawn stuff in, in Trick Room is also punishing. Uh, you put things to sleep, things get out of position. Urshifu also here uh, just makes a lot of sense. So Gashadon, um, you know, having some an impact in Regulation D. Also good into Kyogre, right? We forgot about that. Uh, you know, so, you know, Gashadon having some good use here. It's nice to see uh, it, be, you know, get a little bit more play. But overall, what about, what, what else is there? Again, we mentioned the combo stuff. Like, look at all the Clefairy Calyrexes. Like, this is another one with Clefairy Calyrex from... Francisco like again just fire water grass stuff slap on a Clefairy slap on a Raging Bolt and here's your setup nasty plot Calyrex right along with Clefairy so that there's there's something there um anything else uh that we haven't quite hit no I think that's was it this one has Carmine's team Carmine over here he has the the Arkeladon here I guess it makes sense right with Rain Dance, Urshifu and then Arkeladon over here um Body Presser right into you know those dark types a Snarl user Okay, so that's also pretty good. Snarl is like so good in this format. Uh, again, you'll see uh, so many Snarl users besides just Raging Bolt, but um, go figure. But again, Calyrex Shadow teams, like, yes, we understand. They're not getting the results that, you know, people thought it would be getting. But like, a couple 10-4s, like, that's still pretty solid. All right, so how did Maridon teams do in Stockholm? Actually, they, they did very well. Um, and here's the stuff. It's not just all Rajon's team, right? Um, there's other variations that people are using, but the, here's the consensus. You've got Maridon, then you've got Furograph and Blood Moon Ursaluna, and both of these are very good into the Shadow Rider matchup. This is the reason, this is one reason why Calyrex can't really do the job that it wants to do, because these two are running around, okay, and you can't click Astro Barrage, <laughs> okay? And then from here, you either add something like Incineroar, okay, or you add something like a Chiyu, right? Either or pick your, take your pick. Um, but anyway, all of these are going to do more damage with Chiyu 
and then Incineroar gives you the fake out option to be able to set up the trick room stuff. And then you have some kind of Tailwind setter, whether it be Whimsicott or whether it be the Tornadus, right? And that's a very general way of building a Maridon team right now. So we've got the pieces, we understand the core, okay? So now let's look at some of those teams uh, from Stockholm that were able to utilize it. Wait, no, that's not Lab Mouse. Here it is. Okay, so let's look at Matt's team, right? Mr. Buenti, right? One of our... One of our favorite players overseas, right? I don't know if he ever watches any of our videos, but again, Matt, if you're watching, you know, great job overall. But here's here's what he's doing, right? Maridon, Blood Moon, Ursaluna, Furigraph. So he's taking a couple of ideas from the Rajan team, especially with the Electric Seed, Furigraph, of course, might as well. You've got the terrain. Then you add Iron Hands. Again, also a Pokemon that we know can do well by itself right in previous formats iron hands was like top three usage for like over a year but then it saw a decline in play a little bit um within the last two formats or so but now you add maride on here right and remember we've been playing iron hands without an ability for most of scarlet and violet now you add maride on and now all of a sudden you can give this thing an attack boost now okay and it's gonna hurt a lot Okay, so you might intimidate it with Incineroar, but you just bring it down to neutral. So it's it's Iron Hands back to where it once was. Now you add the Assault Vest. Now it's able to take some special attacks well as, uh, you know, as expected. You get a nice little fake out user again uh, to help you set up this trick room. Like Iron Hands, Ferrigraph, and Blood Moon or Saluna, that was a trio that was used, you know, in previous formats altogether. Okay, now you're just adding it to Maridon uh, and getting a nice little benefit there. Then you add Whimsicott, like I said, the Tailwind Setter. So, you know, following the format um, with Tailwind Setter, Maridon, Ferga, Blood Moon, or Saluna. Then Ogre Pond Wallspin comes in here and again, just gives you another redirector, gives you another good matchup, you know, against the Urshifu Surging Strikes because Urshi, you know, Ursaluna is weak uh, to that. Okay. And then, you know, uh, it just good solid grass moves. Uh, into some of the bulkier water types, like another Urshifu, for example. But look at this. Moonblast, Tailwind, Encore, Protect, Sash, Whimsicott, Terra Ground, of course. Why is it Terra Ground? Why is it Furigraf Terra Ground? This thing has got Discharge. So, you know, you might even just throw out your Whimsicott Maride on turn one, or in, and then turn two, for example, just go Discharge after Tailwind support. So I, I like this a lot from Buenti. Makes a lot of sense. It's really, really cool. Um, and then from here... Let's go and look at some of the other ones. Uh, how about this one? Frederick Nielsen. Like, again, Tailwind Setter, uh, you know, Maridon, Fairgraph, Blood Moon, or Saluna. Here's the Chiyu instead of the Incineroar. Okay. And then it's Scarf Chiyu. That's our favorite Chiyu right now. Um, we were using that a lot. The fact that you can outspeed a Calyrex and click Snarl um, just puts it in a great position overall. And then Iron Hands with the Clear Amulet. So now you can't even intimidate this thing. Now you get to keep your attack boost, okay? Yes, you don't have the Assault Vest, but that's okay. Um, so, again, that, we're seeing some familiar ideas um, with both uh, Buenti's team and this team over here, right? Again, Tornadus over the Whimsicott. You have the Iron Hands here. You still get the Furga Blood Moon stuff. But now you have Chiyu over here just making Maridon and Blood Moon uh, and even Tornadus do more damage. So I like this a lot. This is, uh, again, two, two good solid Maridon teams. Then, of course, then we keep going down here. 10-4, uh, you know, from Mr. Lin's team over here. This is, I believe, the Rajan stuff, right? With the uh, AV Sin and the Cornerstone, right? So there's Rajan team, right? Then after that, still some interesting ideas, right? Look, now we've got the uh, Araquanid with Wide Guard along with AV Sin. But again, slap on Furgraph, slap on Blood Moon, slap on a Tailwind Center, right? This, that's your four. Then your last two are your flex slots. So instead of, you know, Iron Hands fake out, you get Incineroar fake out stuff. Uh, and then your water type is Araquanid in Trick Room, clicking Wide Guard and clicking Liquidations and Leaf Slide. This one also has Rain Dance. That's also pretty interesting. But um, I like this too. Uh, then as we keep going down here, look at this one. This one, now we're adding Dondozo to Maridon, right? You might as well, okay? You might as well add Dondozo. Who isn't, okay? But this is the first Maridon team that isn't using... Uh, the Blood Moon Furgraph stuff, right? But um, still you have Char Scarf Chiyu. Still you have a Tailwind Setter. Then you add Dondozo stuff, okay? And here's the Cornerstone Ogre Pond. This is like some of Rajan's team um, just with like Dondozo, right? Dondozo Chiyu. So I respect it. I think it, it's okay. Um, but is there anything else here that I want to know? No, everything else is uh, relatively Rajan's team. 
uh, along with some other stuff. Oh, how about Mr. Jamie Boyd here? By the way, I want to say something about Jamie Boyd's team over here. The Chandelure. We'll speak more about... Actually, you know, we'll save this for a later section of the video. I wanted to spotlight the Chandelure, okay? But um, Superior here with Contra, Assault Vest. Like, oh my goodness. Look. And then Iron Valiant Wide Guard. Um, you know, again, Iron Valiant is pretty good to ride on. You know, people were using that for a hot minute. Grim Snarl Screens with Electric Seed, Terra Ground. Okay. Um, foul Play Fake Out. Fake to your scary face. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Mr. Jamie Boyd. There is no one like this team <laughs> building here. But I'll speak more about Chandelier uh, in a later part because I, I want to speak about that along with, um, what's that other Fire Ghost type? Uh, not Armor Rouge. Uh, uh, the the uh, several edge that's what it, it escaped me for a moment right i want to speak about several edge and um chandelier in a bit so i know we spoke about a little bit of zama zenta in the beginning part of the video from the winning team from michael right but there's more ways now to you know utilize zama zenta not just the moltres latio stuff right so if we go into lab mouse here uh you can see besides the you know michael and donald smith's uh which were essentially using the same team if you keep going down, like, there's a lot of Pelipper stuff, along with, like, Chen Pao, Rillaboom, and Urshifu Raging Bolt stuff. And I think that's all, that's going to work relatively well, right? So, if you have something like this, right? Let's let's do Zamazenta, okay? Let's let's add the Pelipper here, okay? They do relatively well together. And then we'll borrow some familiar cores from our own Zamazenta team. We'll borrow the Chen Pao. We'll borrow the Rillaboom here, okay? And we don't have Ting Lu, but you could even fit in Ting Lu into something like this. But let's add the Urshifu Surging Strikes, okay? And then, now look at this. Now you've got a pretty decent team, like Pelipper, Ursh, Chen Pao, Rilla, Rillaboom here. Ursh, Rillaboom, Chen Pao is always like a good solid three to add into something like Zamazenta. And then your last slot here, you can just put like Raging Bolt here, and this is pretty solid. Like, this is a pretty good Zamazenta 6 if you didn't want to use uh, the Latios, Galarian, Moltres stuff, right? This has a lot of different ways to play. Okay, and it just all depends on the pieces that you want to bring to different matchups, right? But let's look at this one here from Alex Gomez. So similar idea, right? Pretty much uh, just no Chen Pao, but Zamazenta Pelipper. Here's the wide guard user in the Pelipper. Then you add Instant Rillaboom Urshifu, and then you add Raging Ball. Very, very standard. You can even put Zacian here, and it still works relatively fine. Again, Pelipper bringing the rain. Uh, makes your Make it so that Rillaboom and Zamazenta take reduced damage against fire type attacks. Um, but overall, like you get a wide guard user here, uh, Zamazenta can freely set up its um, iron defenses. You know, you got double fake out stuff, and then the Raging Bolt um, with Terra Electric Booster Energy is just going to do so much damage, right? So I like this a lot from Alex. Then, as you keep going down, again, some similar ideas, like even this one at 8 6 from Cameron. Um, now you add Fluttermane with Booster Energy Icy Wind. Uh, so then you have Raging Bolt here. So now you get a Dragon Fairy Steel Core. A fire water grass with incin ogre pond wellspring and again the pelipper comes in into play over here right so again a more balanced play um that you can utilize with zama zenta uh then over here where is that I, I just saw it here this one has amungus right so amungus along with chen pao uh and no oh yeah here's raging bolt here's the av raging bolt along with incin or stuff right so you know again still works it just all depends on what pieces do you want to surround Zamazenta. But I do think uh, Pelipper is like a must. And then from there, you can just really dictate how you want to build your Zamazenta squad. But I think the six we have here is also like pretty good uh, just in terms of what we wanted to do. So Karayon actually didn't really do all that well. Like look at the results. Like a lot of four fives, uh, one five four here. This one's six three, so that one's okay. But only 195 uh, from Karaidon over here. So let's take a look. Uh, it screens Karaidon, okay? A clear amulet set, pretty standard, along with Rillaboom, Raging Bolt, Calm Mind stuff behind the screens. Gold Dango Choice Specs with Trick, of course. Then here's the Cornerstone, uh, you know, with Karaidon in and itself, right? It's really good against other flying types, which put pressure into Karaidon, especially, right? So this is pretty cool in terms of trying to build with Karaidon. Like, usually you just see, like, the Tailwind stuff with... Uh, Tornadus, Fluttermane, Chiyu, Raging Bolt, right? So this is a little bit different. I respect this. Then over here at 6-3, this is where you get the classic Fluttermane, Raging Bolt stuff, right? Then you get Amoongus, and still you get Goldango. Imagine Goldango here in the sun, right? It, it couldn't be me, but here it is. Uh, then you have Incineroar yet again. Incineroar is always going to be good in the sun, 
Uh, but no Flare Blitz, uh, oddly enough. I guess they want to go a different direction there. But um, Choice Specs, Fluttermate with Icy Wind. Again, a little bit more speed control. But all in all, it's just all about surrounding it with uh, those Protosynthesis pieces. Okay, and then from there, how do you want to play uh, the rest of your team? But not a great showcase this time around uh, in Stockholm, but uh, we'll see what happens in Los Angeles. I want to go back to Terrapagos for a second. So if you just consider the two main weaknesses uh, for it that give it a hard time, you got something like Zamazenta, of course, and then at the same time, you have Karina. Okay, now if only there were a Pokemon that you could use that can deal with both of these relatively well, and there is... Okay, if we go into uh, the tournament uh, from Aurelian Sola, okay, he found the answer and it was, in fact, something called Sour Ledge, right? You know, something that you haven't really seen all that much uh, in quite a few formats. Armrooch has been getting more of the spotlight, right? But Sour Ledge makes a lot of sense here, and I'll tell you why, okay? It's a Ghost Fire type uh, with Flash Fire, which does a lot of different things. You kind of just wall both of those options, right? So again, just consider... Sarah right? Again, Fire Ghost. So, like, how are you hitting this thing if you're clicking fire, uh, Fighting Moves? You don't, right? Because you're a Ghost type. And then at the same time, uh, you have access to Bitter Blade. So now you're dealing super effective damage against Zamazenta. Zamazenta cannot hit this thing, right? Because, again, it might, it might have the Steel Move, but that's just resisted overall, okay? And then the same thing goes for Karidon. Karidon literally cannot hit it, right? Because you have Flash Fire. You can't click the Flare Blades. You can't click... The, the flame charge and then you can't even click collision course right you're just going to basically have this one-on-one -on -one scenario if you can force a one-on-one -on -one end game with sarah ledge versus karaidon or even zamazenta you're you're gonna win because they can't hit you and you can hit them for super effective damage now one thing in terms of an ev spread you can even consider if you really wanted to use sarah ledge is just outspeed max speed pelipper so go to about 118 i think that's a good starting point obviously go like adamant nature then you could do something like this with 176, you know, just some attack damage, you know, then max HP, then these 40 EVs are just left over, one point in spit that, and then just dump the rest here into uh, defense, right? Just a very quick EV spread that you can use to jump into the ladder if you really wanted to test it. But Bitter Blade makes a lot of sense. Then you get even stuff like Shadow Sneak, right? So now you can, you know, really do some damage against the Calyrex Shadow Rider. You can go get Bulk Up. Right, and then even here protect right and i think that's what uh the set was over here right yeah it was and then terra bug here also makes a lot of sense in some different matchups but again terrapagos sarah Ledge, good matchup idea there right and then the other five is just very very standard very consistent Tor tornadoes tailwind with the uh, the choice spec stuff then you add raging bolt and flutter main of course uh, and then Urshifu is also just matchup specific, right? So makes a lot of sense. It's it's really interesting to see Sarah Ledge here. Like if if Calyrex Ice Rider, uh, and, and then even it does uh, well into that, right? But if Zamazenta and Karidon start to rise within the meta, and I think they will, right? Then Sarah Ledge could have a very interesting spot uh, in the given meta. Now that being said, there was another Ghost Fire type. Uh, that was being used and that was from Boyd's team that we were mentioning uh, earlier, right? That was Chandelure. Now, I know Boyd didn't have the greatest result with 5-4, but it, it kind of does still the same, do the same thing, right? With Chandelure. And now you can't even get intimidated. Now you have Life Orb. You're doing so much damage. Then you have Trick Room over here. So Chandelure is serving that same role uh, that Seralege was serving, right? And that you get a Ghost Fire type uh, with Flash Fire. So it's very interesting to see those two types uh, or rather, those two Pokemon have some play here because, again, if if Karanon and Zamazenta prove to be uh, the real thing, right, and they have been, and they're going to rise in usage, which they are, then I think both of these are, are going to do uh, decently in, into those specific matchups, all right? Kyogre didn't have the greatest of showings, just like Karanon. Now, it did get, like, pretty good results, uh, somewhat good results uh, back in Indianapolis. I think it got, like, 9th, 10th, or 11th. Something like that, but uh, not so much here. Six three, six four, then a bunch of five fours. Uh, but the usual Kyogre stuff, right? You're gonna see the Tornadus, Arkeladon stuff. This is very, very standard with Incident Amoongus as well, right? So you'll you'll always see something like this. So here's Giovanni's team, right? You know, Terra Grass Kyogre with Tornadus, Tailwind stuff. Then here's the Arkeladon, uh, and then the Fluttermane with Thunder Wave and Icy Wind. That's a tech move. Okay, but then you'll also see the stuff with Serena. So here is Kyogre again, here again with Tornadus, with Chen Pao, Serena, 
Then you have Raging Bolt. Then here's the instant slot, right? Again, we've we featured Serena in a previous video. Uh, it does relatively well with Kyogre because you're denying Raging Bolt and Rillaboom priority moves against the Kyogre itself, right? So uh, that makes sense there. Then you get the double genie idea. And I think these are just the three main ways of utilizing Kyogre right now. Do you want to use their Arkeladen stuff? Do you want to use Serena? Or do you want to use the double genie idea with Landris? Landris has a pretty good interesting niche right now just because, again, the rise of Maridon uh, is evident. And then the ground type is going to be needed and Landris can help you in that sense, right? So um, I feel like these are the, the best three Kyogre teams at this given moment, um, you know, and for good reason, because they all have and they all do something different, but they didn't have the greatest of showing here, but we'll see what they can do in Los Angeles. With more Maridon on the rise, I thought Groudon would get a little bit more usage and it did get a little bit of an uptick. Um, there is one... 8-6 uh, Groudon team, and this is it here. Of course, as expected, you're going to see Raging Bolt and Fluttermane the same way you partner with a Karidon here, but then you add Gastrodon. This is a very familiar idea with the Rinya Sun idea um, where he had Gastrodon over here. Then you have Ogre on Heart Flame, which again uh, goes relatively well with Groudon. We featured the, this combination as well. Then, of course, Incineroar in the Sun uh, also can do very, very well, right? Uh, but interesting enough, again, this Incineroar does not have Flare Blitz, uh, instead, opting for the Willowbiff knockoff set, right, which is relatively standard right now in Regulation G. But again, I see when Flutterman for more speed control, uh, you know, in the sun, you get a speed boost so you can get control over the Calyrex. Uh, and then from there, outspeed uh, with stuff like Groudon or even the Ogre Pond Heartflame, right? And again, uh, like we said, here's Gastrodon. Like, uh, you know, we said a little bit earlier, um, Earth Power, Ice Beam instead of Icy Wind, Yawn and Protect. Very, very good in the sun. Uh, and again, uh, very, very good into like Urshifu, Kyogre stuff. Uh, but again, we'll see how much Gashadon usage will, will happen. Uh, you did see some here, and I do expect it to be a little bit more prevalent, but not as much as one would think like back in Sword and Shield when Kyogre was like a huge menace with Dynamax. It's not getting as much usage here. Um, but that being said, there is Raging Bolt stuff running around. Uh, there is Maridon, okay? So that's compensating. Uh, for the lack of Kyogre usage. And you do need a ground type, so Gashanon can very well be that person uh, to help you in that matchup, uh, like we mentioned earlier. But um, I do think, I still believe Groudon will get a little bit more usage heading into LA. Uh, you did get a, a tiny bit here uh, in Stockholm, and you did get 186 team, so it's not too bad. Uh, again, Groudon's like okay as a restrictor. I, I see right now it's like a, in the B tier, okay? That being said, so. You know, B tier is still okay. You can win a tournament with a B team. All right, we always have to cover Zacian, right? Like with the whole hype around Zamazenta, how did Zacian do in this region? Again, times are different. We live in a different time. This is Scarlet and Violet. This is not Sword and Shield. All right, we live in a period with the Zacian nerfs. And Guillermo Castilla was still able to find uh, a 9-5 result with Zacian Pelipper here. So again, this is probably the best way to build it right now. If you had to build a Zacian team, just literally the Pelipper with the Instant Amoongus backbone, right? Here's your White Guard user. Uh, a Steel type in the rain is going to be solid. Most of your damage is going to be done with Urshifu. And then even Raging Bolt here with the Assault Best set works well. Like Instant Raging Bolt just controls a lot. And then from there, you can do a bunch of chip damage. Let Urshifu come in. Surging Strikes, everything else. And then Zacian can finally do the job and clean up. Uh, and just go for stuff like, you know, Behemoth Blade afterwards, right? So um, that's the main way that you can use Zacian. Uh, other than that, it's not really being played right now. A bunch of 5 fours, but at least the ones that did get results, like, you, you know, again, the, the Pelipper is the best way. Now, that being said, I do think some sets with Gouging Fire, King Gambit can work, okay? But overall, it's just not uh, the king that it once was. Uh, back in Sword and Shield, of course. All right, so folks, that's going to do it for now for our recap of Stockholm. Let me know what you thought of the region. And let, let me know what you thought of some of the niche options or some of the archetypes overall. Let me know what you think of Zamazenta being number one right now. And again, if you're trying to do some team building for LA, if you're going to LA and you need a little bit of help, feel free to reach out to us uh, on the channel. Sign up for coaching, tier three sub, get you a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. If you check the video description below, there's a link to click and join the channel with the tier three sub as well as in the comment section there will be a pinned comment that you can click and join the channel with that tier three sub and then from there you can message me on discord 
we can plan a time to meet and then get you the squad that you need to be able to compete at a regional. Or if you're just trying to get something for online ranked ladder play, uh, or even just like online tournaments, if you just want to do that instead of the regional, then yeah, you can also sign up for coaching as well. All right, so that'll do it for now, folks. We'll be back with another video in the next one. Peace out and have a good one.